past fatal heart impact, past painful starts. In fact, I blast tasteful thoughts and past. I back up my actions, fact, don't mask, grab reactions, jack, attack with every word, then act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce. I ain't lost, I'm finally loose. Pick a new so for excuse. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember, you're discreet now. Get ready for Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kiru Show here, and now, whenever we last left off, with this series, we had a Zugu Carter, and a mission he has just received. Now, Bedoya has received a mission from a man he believed to be the director of the facility he was trained at. However, that man actually turned out to be somebody who was on the high table. Midoriya, he was given a mission to safeguard and protect this man's daughter from an excommunicado. And things got a bit more serious when Midoriya actually did find the man's marker inside the case. Now, with that being said, Midoriya, he does actually head out, and he would purchase a vehicle. Now, the Continental does at least have some vehicles on hold or on standby for certain people. Right now, Isla Carter, Midoriya's mother, she has his car, and Midoriya did actually decide to take a motorcycle. As he did head out. Now, Midoriya headed out and went to a specialized location that Hitman can use. Heading there and actually dropping off the marker that he was received. Informing somebody that this marker that he does have is very special and important. And that he would like it sent to his account. Or his specialized stockpile. The man informed Midoriya that that will work. Asked Midoriya for his proper security clearances. Midoriya actually at least scanning his fingerprint and taking out a small key. As he does take out that small key, the man would look around. And find a box labeled Carter. As Midoriya would put his key inside of it and turn it to open it. As it does actually pop open, Midoriya would set the marker inside of it along with the man actually scanning his own fingerprints. Now, he would inform Midoriya that this will be sent back to his facility, and that it will be given over to the director to verify that this information and whatever is inside the box is supposed to be within his hands. Midoriya is just nodding, and bidding the man farewell. You have a good day, sir. Midoriya leaving getting back on the motorcycle as he actually has put on the helmet. Now, as he does so, he actually does go over the files on his phone. He at least took pictures, and he doesn't want those files within his own possession. Hmm. Let's see. The address isn't too far away from here. I wonder. Now. As Midoriya is thinking that, we do actually have something that does happen. A guy and a couple of his friends do actually walk past Midoriya, looking to see his motorcycle. What looks to be an old American Harley, and Midoriya with a suit on and his helmet. One of the guys talking about how that's a real nice bike. As he actually does walk over and look at Midoriya. Midoriya is still at least scrolling down on his phone. As he would finally at least look up and turn to face the sky. The guy asking Midoriya exactly what type of bike is that. Midoriya not saying a single word. As the other guys, they actually do both join in. Along with the blonde haired guy actually at least staring at Midoriya. And at least saying that it looks like it's American. 
Hmm? Yeah, you're right. Bakugo, how do you know so much about bikes? Hmm? Um, I think I've seen one before. Bakugo not want to admit that he's seen a bike like that in an old romance movie. Midoriya just at least staring at this blonde-haired guy for a minute. Bakugo? Hmm. I think I've heard that somewhere. Hmm, whatever. I'm busy right now. Midoriya at least saying that they need to leave his bike alone. And he's heading out anyways, putting his phone back in his pocket and turning on the bike. Looking at them as he actually does rev up the engine before at least driving off. Popping a wheelie as he does actually get out of there. And they do actually stare at him do that. Now, the two people there do actually want to say that they're taking bets. That guy's a badass. What do you think he does? Do you think he's a pro hero? Hmm? No, he couldn't be. Well, I mean, what else could he be? Could he be a stuntman? Hmm? Probably a movie star. Why else do you think he didn't take off the helmet? Hmm. That's weird. Huh. Now, Bakugo doesn't think anything of this, as he would go to catch up to his friends. Now, with that being said, we do have an hour later. Midori got a little bit turned around, but he did eventually find the address. As he did drive up to the gate and put in the pin code. The gate opening as he does actually drive onto the property. And arrive. There being a bunch of men in suits as Midori does pull up. As soon as he does, he actually does turn off the bike and bring down the kickstand. Setting it down as he actually does pull his helmet off and shake off his hair. Now, Midoriya's hair is short and slicked back a little bit, at least parted somewhat to the side. Now, Midoriya, he would actually go to get off the bike, one of the men asking if he is the specialized carter they have asked for. Hmm? Well, yes, I am. Midoriya actually pulling out some ID, and saying that that's him. Hmm. I see. Well now, please come inside, sir. We would like you to meet the person you will be safeguarding. Alright. Now, Midoriya does actually walk inside with the man, as five men do follow behind Midoriya. Now, with that, Midori does walk into the building, and look at the giant manor. This place is huge. Hmm. Where do I even begin? Now, after walking through, eventually Midori does begin to hear a piano. And they do come to a room, where the man does actually open the door, and walk in. Closing the door behind him as he actually does inform the person playing the music that a specialized guest has come here. Now, with that being said, a minute does pass before the door does open once more, and Midoriya actually does walk in. As he does so, the man does actually pull Midoriya aside to a table, asking him to please completely disarm. Midoriya properly agreeing reaching into his coat, and pulling out a handgun. As he does then at least reach underneath his right sleeve and pull out the tactical blade he does have there. As he would then also do the same thing for his left hand, getting the smaller blade out, of, out underneath his, well, right side of his pants, and at least pulling two guns out from his ankles. As he would set them down. The man asks Midori if he does have any more weaponry. He is quite a well-armed man. Hmm. Midori at least patting himself down. As he does actually just take off the jacket and actually just tell the man he could search him if he would like to. The man doing so. Midori has no more weapons. And Midori, he actually does turn around as the man does 
pat down the other side of Midoriya's pant leg, and inform Midoriya that he is clear, and free to walk forwards. Midoriya doing so. As the, well, the young girl, a girl around Midoriya's age, is sitting there at the piano, on the bench, looking at this boy. She does look quite confused, as Midoriya would walk up, and actually stand at least 10 feet in front of her, where she is on the bench, as he would politely bow and say that it is a pleasure to meet her. His name is Azuku Carter, and he has been hired by her father to protect her and safeguard her. Hmm? Really now? And exactly why would my father hire you? Well, I'm not entirely too sure. Your father called me a young upstart whenever I met him before. Hmm? You've met my father? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Please do not call me by that. Just call me by my name. Hmm? As you wish, Miss Intelli. Now, surprise everyone. It's not Momo. I don't know why all of you guys think that any time I talk about a character with money, you guys go to Momo. I like to mess things around a bit, and I thought about bringing Momo to the story. But, yeah. She might be involved later. Now then, with that being said, Miss Intelli, she has actually asked Midoriya his name and quirk. Midoriya stating that he is quirkless, and her being quite confused. Why would her fa father hire a quirkless bodyguard? Midoriya explained that his skill, prowess, and abilities. Now, as he actually has to say that, Intelli does go on saying that she doesn't believe that his abilities are all that well. As Midoriya does actually see a red dot or a red line appear directly through his back. And he does see it move outwards in front of his body. As he actually does go to turn around behind him and jump out of the way. The person throwing something at Midoriya. Now, Intelli was surprised that Midoriya did actually avoid that attack, especially because she gave no warning to him. So, all of a sudden, he just looked to his left and turned. So, that was quite impressive. Now, Sako does go on in stating that her father really does need to have a better choice in bodyguards. And that the only way that she will truly believe Midoriya is right to safeguard her is if he is able to take down her current bodyguard. Now, with that, we do have the man standing in front of Midoriya, who does actually possess a super strength quirk. Now, Midoriya does actually hear about this, and he does look towards Intelli, asking exactly what is her quirk. Hmm. My quirk is super intellect, and it allows me to do a variety of things. In fact, it also does allow me to calculate your outcome, and chances of winning this. Now, if you are quirkless, but you are able to dodge that attack, hmm, I would state that you have, let's see, running all the outcomes, hmm, about a 2% chance of winning. So, you might as well just give up. Hmm, 2%? Alrighty then, Midoriya says walking forwards, talking about how he just needs to get to his table. Her quite confused by all this, as Midoriya, he actually does look to his right. If he does go that way, then the man will have less likelihood to catch him, and the path that he would take would be successful. However, looking to his left, the path that way would also be quicker. 
but most of it is cut off, except for one small pathway. So, Udoi would run to his left, and head directly for the table. The man actually turning around and going to grab something from the table. As, he does actually go to grab a knife. Now, he actually has grabbed the knife and turned before trying to throw it directly at Midoriya. Who, he is on the far right side of the room, while in Telly, she's on the far left. So, the man would not have been able to hit in Telly or at least come close to it at all. As, he throws the knife at a heightened speed. At Midoriya, he actually has dodge out of the way, as he slows down perception, or slows down time to himself. As the knife is directly 10 feet in front of him. Him going to dodge out of the way and move. As he also does actually predict the best place where he could actually grab the blade and use it as a weapon. As soon as the margin does actually open up, Dory is able to grab the blade. And time would quickly, at least, go back to normal for him. People watching as he actually does quickly grab the blade out of the air as he does actually flick it backwards and throw it directly back at the man. Now, this actually does alarm and telly. How the hell did he just do that? As his margin for success just jumped by 25%. Now, with that being said, the blade goes flying through the air. And it actually does skid directly past the bodyguard's neck before slamming into the wall behind him. The man actually going to grab away at his neck, thinking that Midoriya hit the artery. Midoriya telling him that he does not need to worry. However, if he just was two inches more to the left, he would actually be dead, and bleeding out on the floor. Telling the man that if he would like to continue, he'd actually get a bit more serious. The man, watching Midoriya, actually at least crack his knuckles now saying that he was just getting warmed up. Hmm. I, six, I, bleh, I give up. I was going to say I concede. Oh, there we go. Now I can say it. Anyways, now. This would be where Intelli is quite surprised. As she would ask exactly why her father decided just to hire another bodyguard. Now, Midori would actually quickly turn to look at her, stating that he does not know why. In fact, he just received the call roughly about 90 minutes ago. So, if she is done with that, he can somewhat explain a bit more about it. Her father hired him specifically to catch a man who, or kill a man who is excommunicado. And the bodyguard man actually at least shushing Midoriya about that. As he walks over and does actually pick up Midoriya by the back of his shirt. And go to carry Midoriya out. Now, Midoriya, he's actually trying to at least get the man to let go of his jacket. It is durable and made of armor, yes. But he's about to tear it. The man setting Midori down outside, as he actually does, still clutching the wound on his neck, say that Miss Intelli has no idea about any of that. What? You were telling me this girl is the daughter of a high table member and she has no idea? Yes. We've kept it as much of a secret as long as we could. And we believe she still has no idea about this. Oh, for fuck's sake. Hmm? You're kidding me. No. Listen. I don't care who you are, kid. If this girl finds out about this, there's no telling how she'd react. Hell. Just by saying the word excommunicado, you probably raised a lot of questions for her. Ha. <sighs> Besides. It was easier for us to try and write off most of the things when she was younger. But after her quirk manifested... From what I've heard, there was a lot more problems. And, well, a specialist had to be brought in. A specialist? Yes. 
In fact, well, they might need to be brought, be brought in again. Okay, I don't see the problem here. Ah, <sighs> well, that's just it. You're hired to be her bodyguard. And kill the man who's after her. After that, you can leave. And our job will go back to normal. Hmm. All right, fine. Now. With that being said, Midoriya does actually walk back into the room. As Sayako actually is still sitting there. Ask Midoriya to please elaborate on what an excommunicado is. Midoriya going to state that he actually does not know. It is something that he learned in English, or he believes it to be German or Scandinavian. Her confused on that last language. Midoriya brushing it off by just saying that he's fairly certain it is Scandinavian, going on to speak in that language a bit more, or at least deciding to mix it and butcher it with English to try and make it make sense. Trying to mix excommunicado in there somewhere. No. She's very confused by all this. That does not make sense. Then again, she doesn't understand that language. And, well, as a wise man once said, that's just complicated. Hell, English already is like three languages wearing a trench coat. Anyways, now, with that out of the way, I do hope you guys enjoyed this part. And have an amazing night. I will catch you guys in the next part.